it's interesting with these kind of filler pay-per-views to see what WWE does to make you want to watch them and make you actually enjoy watching them. And sometimes they do a better job than others. And even now, as I reflect back on Payback last night, I'm just kind of left with the feeling of, eh, it's fine. Right? Yeah, it was okay. Eh. It wasn't fantastic. Eh. Yeah, it had some good stuff. It had some eh stuff. Stuff I didn't care about. Like, kind of a mixed bag. Like, one of those typical modern WWE pay-per-views for me. And that's really what it was. Uh, a bunch of stuff that I really didn't care about. Some stuff that did have me emotionally invested. Some really good matches and some eh matches. Um, just, just the name of the game. Like, for example, the steel cage match between Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. I'm sorry, I don't give a shit what anybody tries to excuse, defend, or justify. This match that we got, I mean, I guess it's a good thing that it was here on Payback. But it was the best match on the card, and it opened the fucking show. And you're telling me we couldn't have found a place to put this match, this match, on fucking SummerSlam? To which somebody might come back and say, well, you smash another match on the fucking show. No, you take whatever match had fucking Charlotte, and you bump it out. You bump another match out if you need to. Like, this match actually had meaning, it had purpose, you had a reason to give a shit about the characters involved. Like, this shit was damn good. And it's in all seriousness, it, to me, it was the best match on the card, and everything else was downhill after that, and not in the best way. But I just, I just can't, for the life of me, understand why this match wasn't at SummerSlam. But it is what it is. But yeah, fantastic opener. Like, Trish and Becky just did a great job. Trish looks amazing. I'm sorry, but before the match, when she got up in that dude's face... I'm not saying if I'm in that dude's spot, I'm taking a kiss and running the chance, but I mean, I'm not not saying that either. Like, come on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I respect consent. But yeah, you'd have to be pretty tempted. Um, but it's crazy that she's in her late 40s and she's still able to do this stuff. She had the nasty welt on her forehead. And I've been there and I've had one of those before and like, she, she delivered, Becky delivered, this was great. Um, and then you follow that up with John Cena, the host for Payback. Oh boy, here comes the greatest of all time. Now I'm going to sit here and listen to that fucking propaganda. So yes, there'll be a video coming up in a couple days talking about this shit. Because every time he comes back is every time you start to see this propaganda bullshit being pushed. And every time I feel the need to have to fucking respond and remind everybody of reality a little bit. Well, that said, it was kind of cool. You don't have Roman here, so fucking find a way to shoehorn in Cena. And he's there, and the promo between him and Miz was good. It really was. And then you got Cena as the guest referee for LA Knight versus The Miz, which this match felt like, was I the only one that felt like this went a couple minutes long? Maybe? You know, I could just see in Cena's eyes, though, the look of, where's Randy Orton? WrestleMania 40, one more time, but this time it counts! But I could also see, like, he was seething under the surface of, you're lucky, L.A. Knight, that this isn't 12 years ago, because I'd have buried your ass! And you could see he wanted to go! He wanted to do it! Which, I mean, personally, you know, if you're looking for something for Cena to do, and you're looking for something to L.A. Knight to do, like, John Cena should be wrestling L.A. Knight, at an upcoming pay-per-view. And John Cena should then be wrestling Cody Rhodes at an upcoming pay-per-view. Like, if you're going to have John Cena there and you're going to maximize his time, that's a pretty good way to maximize his time. Have him face off against those two guys. Just my thought. On uh, the United States Championship, speaking of things involving Cena, how far the mighty have fallen at WrestleMania, Austin Theory sitting there beating John Cena, and now, at payback, he's jobbing out to Rey Mysterio in a United States Championship match. Whoopsie-daisies. Whoopsie-daisies. I mean, yeah, like, that's not the way this is really supposed to work, right? <laughs> like, you don't have him beat a legend like John Cena at WrestleMania, and then he's jobbing out six months later uh, to Rey Mysterio. That's just crazy to me. But whatever. Like, clearly, theory's fallen at least a little bit out of favor, and, you know, more realistically, probably put him in the spot on the card that he really needs to be in. Uh, the Tag Team Championship match between the Judgment Day and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. 
it took me a while, but eventually they did get me into it. At first, I'm like, I don't know why I'm supposed to care about this, and I know I really don't. Um, and as much as the WWE has tried to push and pound and force Judgment Day, this is not one of these all-time factions. They don't have that level of talent in there. Just stop this shit. But yet, they proceed to persist. However, as this match went along, they got me. And yeah, shit, I certainly popped, even as a Hawks fan, seeing Kevin Owens draped in the Mario Lemieux sweater. I'm like, fuck yeah, Mario Lemieux was a goddamn beast. Super Mario was a man back in the day. One of the truly all-time greats and the best all-around hockey player that I've seen in my lifetime. To which some of you are going to say, well, what about the great one, Wayne Gretzky? And I'm going to repeat myself. The best all-around hockey player I've seen in my lifetime is Super Mario Lemieux. Period. And you're saying, well, why the fuck do I care about this? And it doesn't matter. I got geeked out for them being in Pittsburgh and Kevin Owens wore a Mario Lemieux jersey. All right, fair enough. But yeah, this match really got me. And even all the shenanigans and interference, it worked. The Judgment Day. You know, now you've got these guys are tag team champions. I, I guess it works. It's just... Now, where do you go with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn from here? It's a fair question. Uh, you had the Grayson Waller effect segment, which, you know, if you were sitting there saying, this just feels like a Raw or a SmackDown, this wasn't a segment that really did beat those allegations because it's Grayson Waller. He has Cody Rhodes on. Cody's and him go back and forth for just a little bit. And then we get the reveal of Jey Uso's coming to Monday Night Raw. He's been gone for all of like two weeks. Hot damn. We're continuing down that path of Cody finishing the story as fucking stupid as that sounds and is. But yeah, main event, Jey Uso got a big pop. The fans were happy, so it is well, whatever. Uh, the Women's Championship, Raquel Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley. I'm, I don't give a shit. I let both of them fuck me up. <laughs> and I know there are a lot of dudes in the comment section right now saying, Amen, dude, amen, Rhea Ripley can do things to me that others just wouldn't be allowed to do. And you know what? That's totally understandable. And frankly, any ladies that might be watching this might also similarly say, Oh, she can do things to me too. And again, I totally get it. Uh, this match wasn't great though. Um, seemed kind of awkwardly paced and the movements was a little uh, at times some of the moves were a little sloppy but it is what it is i think rhea ripley's been a uh, God, she, women's champion but to me you can sit there and blame the champion and say well the things that she's doing aren't great but then you look at like some of the opponents she's had and you can really question like well how great were you really expecting this title ring to be for her it is a legit fair question and then you get to the world heavyweight championship between Shinsuke Nakamura and Seth Rollins. And, you know, there was a piece of me that thought maybe, like, this is where Damian Priest was going to come in and cash money in the bank. Uh, because they're sitting there talking about they have all the gold. And I'm sitting there saying, no the fuck you don't. Dude, you've got a briefcase, but you don't have the World Heavyweight Championship. That's pretty stupid to say. So I thought, you know, maybe there'd be a chance to come out here, uh, try to give us some type of shocking finish right before the NFL season starts this upcoming week. And they didn't do that. Matches about what you would expect out of Shinsuke and Seth. And it's not saying it's bad. It's just, you know, been there, done that, this type of match. Um, I will compliment WWE, though. You know, they figured out to me with Shinsuke, this is about the most interesting his presentation to me has ever been. Like, imagine the thought of, hey, let's just let the fucker cut promos in Japanese and then put dubs there. It's actually more intimidating, more interesting when he does it that way instead of trying to speak English. It works better. I love it. You need to do more of it. And the way that they played off of the back and so forth, you know, they at least actually tried to tell a story. Is just, again, I just didn't really care. Like, I look at this card and I say, LA Knight versus The Miz with John Cena as a special guest referee feels like something you would do to pop a segment rating on a Raw or a SmackDown. Austin Theory versus Rey Mysterio for the U.S. Championship feels like a Raw or SmackDown match. Tag Team Championship match. You can say it was a street fight, it belongs on pay-per-view. No, it feels more like a main event of a SmackDown or a Raw. Grayson Waller, in fact, certainly felt like a television segment. The Women's Championship match certainly felt like a television match. This World Heavyweight Championship felt like a World Heavyweight Championship match that you would have when you're trying to pop a rating on a Raw or a SmackDown. Like, the only match to me on this card that really felt pay-per-view worthy was Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch in the Steel Cage. 
Um, but it is what it is. It was a decent night spent watching some pro wrestling, but you know, this show will largely be forgettable in the dustbin of history in a few months.